Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at how to tune individual throttle bodies that are in a force induction application. So engines that come to mind would be a Nissan GTR RB26 engine. They're fitted with individual throttle bodies, a common plenum, and it's also turbocharged. So we'll find that they're unique engines that are going to be in this particular situation. Now you may also be retrofitting naturally aspirated individual throttle bodies and fitting a turbocharger to your engine, you'll find yourself in the same situation. Let's jump in here and take a look at how we set this up for an alpha end strategy, but to be able to compensate for boost pressure. First thing we need to do here is work our way from our fuel tuning page here and jump over to estimate tuning. The estimate table here we've talked about in our last two training modules, this table here is going to be utilized in order to dial in our engine based around individual throttle bodies, alpha end strategy, and boost. Now we have to set up a bunch of details here in order for the MoTeC to calculate and calibrate everything properly in this alpha end strategy. Let's first jump and move over back into our fuel window here and we're going to be setting our volumetric efficiency table, the engine efficiency table here, to a singular cell point and then changing that particular value to 100%. That's the very first step in converting over to alpha N. So I'll click A here on my volumetric efficiency table. I'll go to engine speed and click enable axes. We'll disable that and go to the same thing here for inlet manifold pressure. We'll say disable axes and click OK. Now we're left with a singular cell point. We're going to go into our cell point here and type a value of 100 and then store the update change to the MoTeC. Now we've effectively turned our engine efficiency or volumetric efficiency table into the singular value and set it at 100%, which allows us now to jump back in here to our estimate tuning and start to configure things very specifically for the alpha end strategy. Now the next thing that we're going to do here is deal with our engine load normalized. The engine load normalized is what's used, among other things, into our ignition timing table. We can see right here engine load normalized percentage. Now when we're configuring things normally, for a single throttle body common plenum, so a traditional style tuning with a map pressure sensor, the engine load normalized is pointed towards the inlet manifold pressure reading. So wherever we would find our inlet manifold pressure in terms of our KPA reference, zero to whatever the scaling is going to be for the map pressure, we'll find that we have our breakpoints associated in the table, and it'll do a one-to-one -one lookup. So if we're at 180 KPA of manifold pressure reading, our engine load normalized would be 180. When we're talking about an alpha end strategy, we can still utilize engine load normalized, but we're going to be calculating this percentage based around how much airflow that we're essentially using this estimated alpha end strategy table for. So it's a little bit confusing. We're going to break that down a little bit later in the training module. So when we're dealing with alpha end tuning and we're dealing with a turbocharger, we're not going to have our traditional map sensor. We're going to be fitting with something called a boost pressure sensor that's going to be found before the throttle plates somewhere on the intake plenum that's not going to see vacuum. That's going to see pressure only. So what we're going to do here is jump into our engine and we're going to go here into our load. We're going to go and expand on our normalized. We're going to set our mode here not to inlet manifold pressure, but now we're going to set it to the normal option. The normal will take into account what our air mass is going to be, and then it's going to reference an air mass calculated load percentage here, and that's what's going to look up in the table for our spark timing. We'll talk about how to deal with our spark timing table in a little bit, but we have our first step done for setting up our load normalized relative to air mass estimated from our table here. Okay, the next thing we're going to make sure we have here under the engine efficiency is that the mode should be set to manifold air density. Now it's already configured and set there. Yours is likely to have that same value that we can uh, that we can select here, manifold air density. So I don't need to change or update anything in this aspect. I do want to make sure that I have my inlet air temp sensor fit it somewhere on the plenum for the individual throttle bodies. It's another important detail I wanted to note. Okay, so now that we've set both the efficiency and the load, let's take a look here at the next configuration setting. We're going to jump down here into inlet and then into manifold. We're going to find that we have to configure a few things here. So we have a sensor, we have an estimate. We don't need to worry about the correction down here. That's going to be used for transient fuel field tuning. If we look here under our inlet manifold, we're going to go ahead and set our sensor resource to not in use. So we're not going to set up a map pressure sensor at all. We're going to store that update change 
to the MoTeC. Next, we're gonna go here to pressure and to mode, and we're gonna set the mode to the estimate. So the automatic will allow it to look at the map pressure sensor. If the map pressure sensor fails, it'll then look at the values from our estimate table. Now we're saying we don't even wanna look at the map pressure sensor, we wanna only use the estimate table values, and we're gonna go ahead and store that update change to the MoTeC. Now the next thing we're gonna go move down here is going to be the inlet manifold pressure and the estimate values. The mode here, we wanna change this to boost pressure relative. We can see right here it's already set and configured in that manner. The boost pressure relative is going to assume that we're going to install a boost pressure sensor. Now this is different than a map pressure sensor. A map pressure sensor is mounted after the throttle plate on an intake manifold, so even if you're a single throttle body, you'll find the, in the map pressure sensor is measuring your inlet manifold pressure after your Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.